even the very beginning, even when everything was so upsetting and horrifying and you don't know what is what, we both knew that what we needed to do for Luke and the other two was just keep things as normal as possible. I'm Luke Theodos Yadis. I'm 13 years old and I like to play sports, play video games and hang out with my friends. When Luke was 11, he was starting to have breathing issues just during baseball. So we were just watching him through the couple days of practicing. It was hot out, he was a little overweight. He was sleeping a lot, so we just thought that it was the teenage years coming up. After a week of just watching him, we decided to take him to the doctors, thinking that it might have been sports-induced asthma. That's what I really thought I was going for. The machine knew in our heart that it wasn't that. We had blood work done, chest x-ray, and then the next day, she called me and said, how about you coming to the office? And her telling me all the blood work results. And I just remember thinking, oh my God, how do we fix them? And she said that I hate to tell you this, I need to let you know that Luke has leukemia and that I need you to get the chop right away. We have known other children with cancer, but our children really did not know other, so we were kind of the first one. We kind of just let it go like it was just a sickness, not something severe. Just go into the hospital and we just rolled with it. He kept up, he's in advanced classes and he still got A's in those classes and and we just tried to keep things as normal as possible. So if you're home, you're going to school. That's, you know, that's it. And, um, and he was, if I'm home, I'm going to baseball. And he did. Yes, he did. So, yeah, yeah. The first month, he was just standard of care for ALL. So he was in the hospital for five weeks. At the end of that time, his disease didn't respond the way it should have. And they thought there might have been something else from the beginning, just because his white count was, was so high. All of his tests were sent to research, and it came back that he did have a chromosome translocation. His JAK2, I guess, broke off and translocated and attached itself to his Golga 5. So he went on to a trial drug called ruxolitinib, which was another chemo drug, and he was on that twice a day. In addition to all the other chemos he was still having because he was still standard of care. Nine months later, one of the tests came back that there was still leukemia, but the ruxolitinib had worked. So the hope was that and the next thing would be that Luke would be finally into remission. It didn't happen after a month, and now we're in month nine or 10, and it still didn't happen. So they were calling his leukemia hemoresistant. I think refractory might have been a word they used a couple times. In August, they took out his T cells before he had too much chemo while they were at their healthiest, thinking that maybe that would be the way this is going to go. And it ended up being that way. So his last biopsy in May, even though the leukemia number was, was very much down, it wasn't gone. And then they decided that he wasn't in a place where he could have a bone marrow transplant, which is what the goal was. So they said, let's get this CART-19, this T-cell study going with Luke. And the T-cells worked. So the leukemia is, they didn't say gone, they said undetectable, I guess, which was great news. And he's been so healthy since then, doing everything exactly the way he used to. You know, he's not where he was, you know, stamina-wise and all those sorts of things. Through this whole past year, he kind of just goes okay, with okay. everything. Like whatever the doctor said, he just did. When he was really sick, you wouldn't even know. Never complains, just mm -hmm. kind of does it. I learned that as long as you like stay strong, like you can get through it. And once you get through it, you'll feel way better. And you'll feel like you just defeated something that's really hard to defeat. It's still not the end for him because the T-cell data is only four or four and a half years old. And with Luke's leukemia being as aggressive as it was and as chemo resistant as it was, the doctors don't believe that that can be it for him. So they think it will come back. Their hope is that the, a bone marrow transplant will be a cure for Luke. They're very hopeful about that, especially since the middle sibling, Nicholas, is a match. So that's where we're going next. I think right now in the immediate, for us, real hope means a cure for Luke and that the bone marrow transplant will be successful. I just think maybe people don't realize how important it is until it hits their family. I mean, you see it all over the place, but I don't know that you really get the gravity of it until it affects someone so close to you. Research can do things that will just make a cure for everybody. I don't think we have any idea where we would be with his disease right now without it because he didn't respond to the standard of care. And so 
you know, it's, it's critical that there is, is funding for research and money for research because, I, like I said, we don't know what our life would be like right now without those options available to us. If someone that's diagnosed with cancer asked me something, I would tell them to stay strong. Don't give up, just keep trying.